Friday Night Huddle, sponsored by Ingalls, Champion Chevrolet, Citizens Bank, and Pals. Welcome into Friday Night Huddle. We are counting down the top five games each week from the high school gridiron. And remember, you can get the scores of your favorite team ticking at the bottom of the screen or anytime at our website at WCIB.com. We start tonight with something that has never happened before. The first ever meeting between Union and Twin Valley. Both teams red hot coming into tonight's matchup. Only one would stay hot. Heading into the second half of the season, Union fired on all cylinders tonight, Rayshawn Anderson finding Cam Bostic. He splits the defenders, lands a good stiff arm, and then takes it to the house. The Titans unable to find any real consistency in their defense. Anderson, this time he calls his own number and scoots through the secondary for six more points. Union would really dominate this game on both sides of the ball, but Twin Springs refused to go away quietly. They want something on the board. How about Ang Abel Dingus with the option? He's going to keep it for some running room, finally finding the end zone for the Titans, but this one was all Union. They go on to win 40-7. to seven. All three phases of the game well, offensively, defense, special teams. I thought our kids uh, came out ready to play. A little bit worried coming off a big emotional win against Gate City, maybe coming out a little bit flat, you know, which I, that happens sometimes. And I, I thought our kids stepped up ready to play. Well, another beating a long time in the making. Elizabeth then making the short trip south to Dobbins Bennett. These two teams haven't met in 15 years, both looking to pick up big out-of-region wins tonight. This was a game of defense in this one at J. Fred Stadium tonight as we start on the third quarter. The score sits at 3 nothing. Cyclones with a field goal, the only points on the board, but that one will last long. Tyler Taylor puts DB on the board. Last play of the third. Indians have the ball again, but Zach Wallen takes, goes up the elevator for the interception. What a play. The Cyclones would not waste the opportunity either. Rhett Slagle Hands it off to Zeth Mullins, who goes around the outside for a huge gain before he's brought down by a couple of Indians just inside the 10-yard line. And Betsy would pad their lead to seven after a touchdown and two-point conversion by Jariah Griffin, our player of the week last week. DB looking to tie things up. They get the look in the end zone, but it's picked off by Griffin. That would just about seal the deal for the Cyclones. They win it 14-7. Just this environment, you know, is it going to be a battle? But this guy right here deserves the credit. Our players doing our defense, big tie. Offense was our one worst enemy to start the game. We moved the ball, we kept turning it over. But our defense, heck of a job, heck of a stop. Hey, this guy right here deserves all the credit. Two games down, three to go on the countdown. We still have stops in the Hoedaker, Johnson City, and Bristol. Plus, a look at some of the other big matchups on the gridiron tonight, like a region 1-4, a battle in Greenville between the Green Devils and Sullivan East. Next week on Friday Night Rivals, we will be a stone's throw from the TV station at the Stone Castle as Tennessee High welcomes David Crockett to Bristol for a key matchup in Region 1 5A. Both teams in desperate need of a win as they fight for a berth in the playoffs. Join us next week from the Stone Castle for David Crockett and Tennessee High on Friday Night Rivals. We'll leave you asking, how do they do that? Friday Night Huddle, sponsored by Ingalls, Champion Chevrolet, Citizens Bank, and Pals. Now here's a look at some of the games that just missed our top five, starting in Greenville. A powerful moment, the Green Devils opening their game against Sylvan East with 72 seconds of silence for middle school football player Kaden Guttner, who passed away earlier this week. The Devils then went to work. Drake Fisher looking outfield, but he's picked off by Hayden Good, and he takes it all the way back to the house. A 65-yard pick, six, seven zip Green Devils. They force East to a three and out, and then go right back down the field, capping it off with a touchdown run here from Carson Quillen, making it look easy. This one was all Greenville. They went 54 to seven. Now to John Battle, homecoming festivities, taking the stage with the Lebanon Pioneers in town to take on the Trojans. End of the first half, Battle down by 10, trying to make something happen, but Noah Sills' pass is bred perfectly. Picked off by Toby Baker. He has a lot of green in front before being pushed out inside the Battle 10. A flag would bring it back a big chunk of yards, though. So that sets up Lebanon way back. They try to take a shot, but Michael Reese is swallowed up 
by Riley Kaiser. That end sends it to the half. This one would go 17-7 Lebanon at the break. Second half now battle on the move to cut the lead, but uh-oh, ball gets coughed up, recovered by Eli Cook. The Pioneers stand tall on defense. The rest of the way, they come away with a 24-14 win on the road. Now to Abingdon, where the Falcons would host the Central Wise Warriors in a Mountain 7 meeting. First possession for the Falcons, Luke Honaker takes the snap, and he's going to take it himself around the edge, and he's coming right into your living room, shaking a tackle, tumbling into the end zone for six. Abingdon strikes first. Now Falcons with it later in this one. Honaker hands off to Owen Barr, and he sees a hole, puts his foot in the ground, and it's blast off time. Nobody on his tail. Barr goes 61 yards for the score. Falcons go up 14-0 early and roll to a 49-12 win. Now back to the countdown. Region 1D could get very interesting as we head down the home stretch. Honaker obviously is the big dog in the region, but Holston, Twinsburgs, Patrick Henry all nipping at their heels. Also in the mix, a Chihuahua team that most thought had another year before they were real players in 1D, but they came in tonight's matchup with Honaker. Just one loss on the season. This is also homecoming at Honaker, but football was king. Chihuahua's first drive, Asher Chapman, Ayers went out to Noah Hill, who goes over the defender for the big catch and the game. Again, a couple of plays later, Honaker's D looks to make a play. Tyler Stevens, who gave out that big play earlier, this time, not so much. He gets the pick. Later on, final play of the first quarter, Peyton Music. This is music to Honaker fans. Ears, he ears went out to Parker Bandy. Makes a great grab for the score. To the second quarter we go. Still 8 nothing. Tigers. Chihuahua looking to try to get back in this one. But Malachi Lowe says, um, uh, not so fast. Laying a lick on the sack. Then here comes Honaker's offense. Again, music to Bandy like a repeat hit. They just play it over and over again. That score gives Honaker the big lead. They go on to win 36 to 8. News 5's Andrew McClung has our post game report. This season, the Honaker Tigers have been known for their passing team, that air raid offense, airing it out all season. But tonight, they became known for another thing, and that was for the defensive play after a stellar effort against Chilhowie. Rushing game uh, and our defense, you know, they stepped up on a night where our passing game wasn't clicking uh, at the beginning there. And uh, Aiden, you know, he stepped up on both sides of the ball. Him and Malachi Lowe led us on defense. On defense, those two players that really shine bright tonight, Malachi Lowe and Aiden Lowe. No relation, but they could start their own lumber business, low lumber, because they were laying the wood tonight. Hey, me and Aiden got this thing. It's, we just go up to each other and we say it's a low thing, and we show that tonight. We laid the wood. It felt really good for both of us to get, do it together and our whole team to do it together. Uh, it was a great team effort. Uh, we got a lot of hats to the ball, and we did a great job of uh, gang tackling tonight. And, uh, yeah, they, they laid the wood tonight, definitely, and it was, uh, it was a good game by them. Both teams next week have open weeks, but then the week after that, Chihuahua will face Will Retreat, and for Honaker, they will face Narrows. Reporting in Honaker, Andrew McClung, News 5, WCYB. Two more games to go in our countdown, including a Region 1 6A brawl in Johnson City and the state line showdown in Bristol as the Vikings host State City. But first, the Dobbins Bennett Band takes us to break. In store. Friday Night Huddle, sponsored by Ingalls, Champion Chevrolet, Citizens Bank, and Pals. For the second straight week, the Tennessee High Vikings are playing host to a team from Virginia. Last week, they took care of business against Abingdon. Tonight, they were looking to make it two for two, playing host to the Gate City Blue Devils in this one as they make their entrance onto the field. First drive of the game, Trent Dowdle is going to poke through everyone and finds the end zone to put the Vikings up 7-0. And then after a controversial no fumble call that had the Blue Devils heated, Tennessee High extends their lead with a touchdown from Donnie Thomas. Vikings showing that they are unstoppable in this one, though, as Jimmy Fix launches one deep down the field. But look at Leighton Barnett for the Blue Devils coming up with a big pick there. They, they, Tennessee Vikings just got the ball back real quick. Phipps connects with Owen Stalk up on a long fourth down to go up 21-zip. And then faking out everyone, including the cameraman, it's 
Phipps taking it himself. Takes a wide open lane to the house. 28 zip and just for good measure, Turner Elliott sneaking one in with 20 seconds left in the first half. This was all Tennessee high. They go on to win big. Here's Lauren Bradford with our post game report. Tennessee High had two Virginia teams enter the castle back to back and sent both home with big losses. Those wins, the Vikings say, are good to build off of. You know, Southwest Virginia football is great. It's a very physical game. They're always coached well. There's a little bit of tradition. We played them in the early nine or late nineties, early two thousand. So it's always good to get a win here in the castle. It's great because up in there in Virginia, they're just hard nosed football teams, and it's just a real physical battle. And we love those games. The Virginia team is always fun. It's always competitive. It's always fun. The team will now get back into district play, looking to continue the strong performances. It's momentum built up for us, and this carries on into the week and then on the Friday nights. Tennessee High taking advantage of being at home, saying the atmosphere of the Stone Castle is unmatched. I mean, just, just look around right now. It's, it's, it's amazing. This place is, is super special. Uh, it's special to all of us. It's special to the community. It's special to the kids. It's special to the fans, the parents, everybody. You just can't beat the Stone Castle in my mind. The Vikings are now sitting at an even 500 on the season. In, but Coach Holt wants to make sure everyone knows the team is just getting started. It's just week to week. We just want to stack. You know, that's what we told them. We played four really good football teams early in the year, and I think a lot of people stop looking at us a little bit. But as our, as our, our schedule kind of pans out and falls out the rest of the year, nothing's impossible. We just want to stack good practices, and that's going to stack wins for us. The Vikings will be back at home as they return to district play against David Crockett next week. Reporting from Tennessee High, Lauren Bradford, News 5 WCYB. Tonight was a proving ground game in more ways than one for both Science Hill and Rest Ridge. Not only do both teams have fairly new quarterbacks, but also this game would go a long way towards deciding who would have home field advantage in the first round of the 6A playoffs. This one living up to the hype early. Baylor necessary goes in for the score. The toppers on top. That's Westridge answering Chase Gill with the touchdown run. The Wolves would then take the lead. It's Gill again just barreling over people for the score. But just before the half, the home team ties it up. Spencer Taylor hits Emmett Watson downfield. It's 14 all going into the break. Second half, all toppers. Taylor to Watson again. He gets behind the defense. And this time he pulls away for the long score. Then it's Taylor finding Steven Faymon in for the short pass. He then tip down, who's down the sideline. Has nothing but green grass in front of him to the end zone. Science Hill wins 27 to 14. News 5's Casey Getz has more on the big win for the toppers. On the final Friday night of September, Science Hill picks up a big win 27 14 over West Ridge. Even though they got the win, Science Hill did not play their best football game, but it was a win. Their first home win of the season. They're now one and two at home. They're three and one on the road. But still, Science Hill head coach Stacey Carter says his team must play better moving forward. We got to clean up some mistakes. That's my biggest takeaway. You know, I, I'm glad we hung in there and made some big plays, but uh, not glad in the performance uh, on the penalties and stuff like that. And, and we got we got to clean some things up. But uh, you know, uh, again, I'm, I'm, we're resilient. We hung in there. That a great game plan and uh you know when they when they play like that you got to make some plays early and, and we we draw had some drops and didn't make some plays and they put the pressure on us and uh and we weren't able to do it but uh you know that happens sometimes in the game but probably what i'm most concerned about is that is the penalties that can't happen so we, we gotta clean that up with the win science hill improves to four and three overall two and one in the region next week they're back in region play on the road though at Morristown East. As for West Ridge, they fall to four and two, one and two in league play, and they are playing next week at league leading Jefferson County. In Johnson City, Casey Getz, News 5, WCYB. Here's a look at some of the other scores from Tennessee side of the line tonight. Cloudland all over North Green, 46 to 8. Hampton, no problem with Eagleman winning 51 to 13. Happy Valley rolls Hancock County 40 to 6. Chucky Joke wins at Clayburn 27 to 6. South Green stays perfect with a 10 point win over Seymour. Cherokee gets their second win of the season 37 to 14 over Granger. Crockett wins big over Volunteer 38 to 18. Johnson County wins on the road 22 to nothing. Pittman blanks Unicoi County. 46 to nothing. Daniel Boone also wins by a shutout 35 to nothing over Cobb County. Thomas Walker comes across the state line and beats Unica 38 to 26. And West Green beats Cumberland Gap 
49-22. Over to the Virginia side, Grundy gets handled by Tazewell, 48-8. Twin Valley sneaking with a sneaking by with a 16. Those are some more scores there. Northwood losing Hasselwood, excuse me, with their first win of the year over Northwood, 40-30. Ryan Cove with a win over Lehigh, 31-26. And Patrick Henry, a major loss, though, at Rural Retreat. They fall 24-14. To some more games, Eastside beating J.I. Burton 28-14. to And over on the Kentucky side of things, Jenkins taking the big loss at home to Jackson County. Taking a look at this week's Top 5 Tuesday ranking, the top four teams of Tennessee hold strong over number 5, West Ridge, which is that tough game at Science Hill. In Virginia, same story on that side of the state line with the top four teams winning. And number 5, Patrick Henry, losing a tough game on the road. That will do it for this week's edition of Friday Night Huddle for Cole Johnson, Lauren Bradford, Andrew McClung, Casey Getz, and all our great photographers. I'm Heather Williams. We'll leave you tonight with a look at some of this week's top plays.